Wow, Zeus is pretty darn upset with Thor. Thor has that way about him. <laughs> so in the first end of credit scene for Thor Love and Thunder, Zeus sends his son, Hercules, to get his revenge. And we briefly see the new Hercules for the MCU who says, yes, father. Now, first off, I think a lot of you might not recognize who that actor is. And I want to assure you that if you are one of the few people, well, I wonder how many people do watch Ted Lasso. I think a pretty good amount do, but Apple TV is a little lower than the other streaming services. But I think, I would hope that most of you know who Brett Goldstein is. And he, anyone who knows who he is knows that he is an excellent choice for the role of Hercules, especially in the world of Thor, dreamed up by Taika Waititi and Chris Hemsworth. I mean, Roy Kent on Ted Lasso is the manliest footballer there is, with a penchant for saying the F word. But he's also not afraid to get in touch with his feelings, all while still retaining his Roy f***ing Kent magic. Great character. Fabulous character. Goldstein, in fact, is an Emmy winner in the role, and the hilarious, gruff, monotone voice he's created for Roy Kent, if you watch his acceptance speech, that's no, not what he actually sounds like. He created that persona. Nice work. And that persona is a perfect fit with Hercules. And he, sure enough, uses that uh, Roy Kent voice in this scene. And I think that that gruff, gruff, uh, gruff approach will be a nice contrast with Chris Hemsworth's upbeat Thor. You know, you have, uh, you know, the darker coloring on uh, Brett Goldstein and like the, 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 the more serious approach. And then you have the blonde surfer guy attitude that Chris Hemsworth's bringing to the table. And I think it's just perfect. Move over, Jamie Tart. Roy Kent has a new rival. And eventually, Jamie and Roy become pals who respect each other. And just like Jamie Tart and Roy Kent, Hercules and Thor in the comics have a love-hate relationship. Sometimes they fight each other, but sometimes they fight, to, they fight someone else together. I don't even think Zeus and Thor will stay mad at each other for that long. I mean, Thor reveals in Thor Love and Thunder that he's a big fan and based a lot of what he does on the, uh, on the Greek god of thunder. I thought that was great. It was a little like Coulson with Captain America. I thought that, and I thought that Chris Hemsworth did that so well. He's like, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a big fan of his. I, I took a lot of inspiration from Zeus's, Zeus's work. So he'll be particularly upset when Zeus sends somebody after him. Although I think he already, you know, they say don't meet your heroes, and I guess that applies to gods too, because that meeting did not, go, not, did not go well. Um, okay, so that's Brett Goldstein. He's gonna do a fabulous job, but now what about Hercules? And I'm sure many of you are surprised that that's even a Marvel character to begin with, but he, not a very popular one. Although he has an oddly strong fandom. There is like a group of Marvel comic book fans who just love Hercules. So I wonder how you feel about this. Uh, I don't know if you, I mean, Brett Goldstein is an outside choice, but I thought he was pretty convincing in that brief shot. I don't, I mean, I don't know if they bulked him up with CGI or maybe the costume department did a really good job playing stuff up, but I thought he looked, you know, as buff as, uh, as Chris Hemsworth. I thought it looked great. So indeed, Hercules first appeared in the pages of Marvel Comics back in 1965 as a rival of Thor in the classic ongoing title Journey into Mystery, which is still published to this day. So it makes total sense to introduce Hercules into the MCU in a Thor storyline. This is the kind of stuff that Kevin Feige gets right and why even though he makes a lot of changes, people for the most part uh, give him the, the, the image of being comics accurate. Uh, in the comics, Hercules is who Marvel calls in when they want to deliver a really great fight for the fans. He takes on Thor, the Thing from Fantastic Four, Hulk, She-Hulk, who he also has dalliances with. Uh, I really would love to see that happen in the MCU. She's coming into the MCU too. Speaking of relationships, there was also a variant of Hercules who was in a relationship, a romantic relationship, with his universe's Wolverine. Now, I don't think Hercules and Wolverine will be a couple in the MCU, although I could see a reference to that at some point because it's one of the better publicized developments for the character over the, you know, the past few years. And a lot of fans were very happy to see it. Uh, so again, they might want to pay homage to that especially considering how progressive Taika Waititi is, which you can see from Thor Love and Thunder. And also Hercules, remember, is a classically Greek character. Uh, Zeus is depicted in this movie as having male and, male and female handmaidens. Uh, so I think there's a very strong chance that Taika, Waititi, Taika Waititi's Hercules could be LGBT, maybe bi, like Loki. Because again, I would like to see him date She-Hulk. I think that is a fantastic superhero couple, especially um, you know, uh, Tatiana Maslany and Brett Goldstein. They would do, they would knock that out of the park. Brett Goldstein in this role, I'm telling you, is such a gift. 
I'm so glad that Marvel locked him down before another franchise got to him. Although other franchises these days, with the exception, I think, of um, you know Matt Reeves' Batman, seem to just waste good actors, which is sad. All right, so anyway, so yeah, basically, also in Marvel Comics, Hercules is a ringer, right? Brought into spice-up storylines, not just with action, but laughs. He's never been, however, a main player. The character he's teamed up with the most, really at all, uh, for an extended period of time is Amadeus Cho. Teenage super genius and dog lover who became uh, a main, you know, he, he was interested, I think he made an appearance beforehand, but he, came, he became an ongoing Marvel character in World War Hulk. So he's, he's supposed to really be technically, even though he had, a, he had adventures with Hercules, he's technically a Hulk area character. Uh, so you, he could show up in the Hulk storyline, or he could end up showing up with um, with Hercules. Hercules, of course, though, as I'm trying to point out to you, could jump to all these different corners of the MCU, just like he does in the comics. Thor, the thing from Fantastic Four, the Hulk stuff. Hercules could go to all these places, which makes him a very exciting character. Uh, but anyway, Amadeus Cho, uh, eventually, after teaming up with Hercules, went on to become a Hulk himself, as you might recall, uh, with the next in, uh, reiter uh, inter uh, reiteration of the Young Avengers, right, with uh, Miles Morales and uh, Kamala Khan. Um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's where we saw Amadeus Cho as the Hulk. And Hercules is also interacting with other Greek gods in the comics, just like Thor finds himself interacting with the other Norse gods. And on that note, let's consider, so that's the comics. Uh, we talked a little bit about the MCU so far, but now let's focus on how this Hercules could benefit the MCU. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but Chris Hemsworth's Thor doesn't really have any friends. Who can understand the problems of a god? Maybe a half-god like Hercules? I mean, they have so much in common. They're both the sons of, sons of vengeful, god, temperamental god kings, right? I mean, Zeus and Odin are cut from the same cloth, man, as is most of mythology. Mythology, you know, it's all kind of the same stories, just with different characters. And I wonder if they'll touch on that. Uh, they're, so Hercules, in some ways, could almost be seen as the Greek Thor. Uh, they're both fighters, handsome lovers, have to deal with large families, and the burden of high expectations. And they're equally matched, Olympian versus Asgardian. What a fight! I can't wait to see it. And while Thor wields Mjolnir, uh, he has Mjolnir back, having given Stormbreaker to his adopted daughter, Hercules is skilled in all the classic forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as classic weapons. That could be really fun to see. Basically, if it happened in ancient Greece, Hercules can do it, which means he might also be quite cultured and illuminated. I think that could not only be really interesting and make him also a little bit different from Thor, but I think Brett Goldstein would knock, the, knock it out of the park with those kind of uh, comments and jokes. That would be just so funny, right? Oh, can you just see that? That Hercules just is like so educated and cultured and open to the world and, 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 and philosophy. Philosophy. I mean, I just love it. Sometimes Hercules is depicted as being able to use modern weapons as well, but I don't like that because I think it makes him too similar to the Punisher then. And also Brett Goldstein and John Bernthal actually have a very similar look. Uh, so it's got to actually hurt a little bit for John Bernthal that Brett Goldstein is joining the MCU and so far he has not. Uh, the Russo brothers and Guy Ritchie are also making a Hercules movie, right? Uh, for, also for Disney, uh, their live-action remake of the 1997 animated fan favorite musical. But Brett Goldstein is the full package. He's got everything. So it's going to be very hard for uh, the Russo brothers and Guy Ritchie to cast a competing character. And I find it very interesting that the Disney empire, once again, isn't better coordinated. How are Marvel and Disney live-action remakes doing Hercules at basically the same time? It's like Ms. Marvel and Turning Red all over over again. Hercules also, I think, bears some similarities to Spider-Man's Kraven, especially with the way Sony seems to be reimagining the character as an animal lover and anti-hero. That's not Kraven, but, you know, whatever. And it's Aaron Taylor Johnson, who, you know, I think you could kind of maybe put him in the same camp. At least Kraven is Russian, so he'll be different in that way, and he's not a god. And then, of course, what about Wonder Woman over at DC? Talk about, like, talk, I mean, holy overlap, Batman. Gal Gadot's shining star might have been tarnished by Wonder Woman 1984. It's mad tarnished. But she's still a pillar of Warner Brothers' DC movies. She's like one of their few bright spots, even though she's so tarnished, which just goes to show you the shape that DC movies are in right now. And she's set to appear in the upcoming Shazam 2, which, by the way, is also a character based on Greek mythology. What do you think Shazam is an anacronym for? Greek mythology characters. And Wonder I mean, that's why he's wearing that cape, man. And Wonder Woman has her own history with Hercules in the comics, the DC version. Wonder Woman also deals with the Greek gods, and now those Greek gods are showing up over in the Thor movies. We've already met Zeus, so that means the rest of the pantheon is there. 
That could be really fun. We'll see how long it takes Taika Waititi to get Thor 5 off the ground. These other projects have a little bit of a head start, although I think it'll probably maybe come out when that Disney live action Hercules adaptation does, because that's only starting to cast, you know, it just signed Guy Ritchie. Uh, I would hurry up if I were them. I would hurry up. But I, for one, am very excited to see Brett Goldstein and Chris Hemsworth first fight and then become good pals. And I guarantee you it will be f***ing hilarious the whole way through. I'm so excited. So how do you feel about Hercules joining the MCU, Ted Lasso fans and non-Ted Lasso fans? I don't think there's a non-Ted Lasso fan. If you are not a Ted Lasso fan, it just means you haven't watched it yet. Even the second season, which isn't quite as good, it ended strong. But anyway, also, what do you think of the casting of Brett Goldstein and the MCU having a Hercules in comparison to all these other franchises, including Friendly Fire from Disney itself. Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.